Another video that we will deal with component testing. This time we will deal with the thyristor. We will see what the thyristor is and how we can check if it is correct. To understand it better, I will draw a diagram for you here on paper. We will see what it consists of internally, so we will keep in mind that it is a diode, a regular diode, with anode and cathode, a design structure. So we have a diode here. Here we are, which however, to conduct also needs a third command, a third little leg. When a pulse is applied to it, this diode will start conducting and unnumbered. In other words, in order for current to flow through it, we must first give a pulse to the third leg. So we have anode, cathode, and the third leg is the gate. It is the gateway for the diode to open. It is essentially a controlled switch. Imagine a combination of a relay with a diode that's a relay that conducts only from one side. And here in this particular beast, I will write to you how the legs go. It is cathode, anode, and the gate. Another important characteristic of the thyristor is that at the gate, we don't need to have a continuous voltage for the diode to start conducting. We need a pulse, that is a momentary voltage. And then beyond that point, it starts to become conductive. It can flow a current from within itself in one direction only, from anode to cathode. And this is interrupted only if the voltage we provide to the anode is cut off, or if the current changes significantly. In no other case, meaning the gate has no relation afterwards to cutting off the current. So let's now design a small circuit, which we will have in order to be able to check the transistors. We will use a small lamp and 12 volt, meaning we will provide a plus 12 volt from the anode, and from the cathode, we will connect a lamp over here with 12 volts. And we will continue to connect the plus here of our power supply, meaning a supplement from a power supply and a bulb in reality. I forgot to mention that in order to become, in order to become stable and remain stable, the beast to store, it needs to draw a little current, usually around 70 milliampers. So if we replace the bulb with an LED, this circuit will not be able to operate. It's better for the bulb to be incandescent. And at the gate, if we now give a pulse from the 12 volts, the bulb will start to light up and will remain lit. If the thyristor is correct, the bulb should remain lit. And if we cut off the voltage from the gate, that is, we can use a button between the anode and the gate, which when pressed should light up the bulb. And when we release it, our bulb should remain lit. And to turn off the bulb, either the anode becomes more negative than the cathode, so we mean a change in current or to cut the trend between rise and fall. So I can put a switch here and cut the wash. If I open this switch and cut the wash, the bulb will stop lighting up. This will be closed and I will open it to stop the bulb from lighting up. And of course, I will close it again. The bulb will not light up. It will wait again to receive a command from G. This is the only way to check if it lights up. A thyristor. It was easier, of course, to be able to measure with the multimeter, as we do with diodes or transistors, but in a specific case, because the diode meter cannot give us the forward current to keep the thyristor conductive. We cannot do it with the multimeter. Some old multimeters which were with a needle, maybe we could manage to measure it, but still not for sure, because they do not have much current. They cannot provide much current for the thyristor to remain conductive. So let's see it in practice. I have here a 12 volt incandescent lamp. So to draw some current, and I have my oscilloscope here, plus for the thyristor. So I will build a circuit that I have designed on paper. I will apply the positive to the anode. The anode in this specific thyristor, we said it's the middle little foot. If we see it over here, it's the middle little foot, the ascent, and it's also the body's top ascent. In this specific thermostat, this one over here, so I put the plus on top of its body. 
Here and on the descent, I will put one wire from the bulb. I will put it here just roughly now. I will solder it. I will solder it on the descent, and I will connect the second wire to my power supply's ground. Here, let me turn it so you can see it better. And for the cutter, I will use a blade. Which will short the anode with the gate, with the G, that is. So let's see it. I have provided the 12 volt. I'm going to eat you. I will bring it a little closer. Okay, let's zoom in a bit and take a look. So now I will short circuit the rise with the gate. Oops, the little lamp turned on. You see, I have now removed the short circuit. I have not short circuited it. And you see that the little lamp has remained lit. Look here. The beast is now stuck in the conduit in a state. So it's correct. That's how we have checked it. And it doesn't close at all. I mean, here now, the light doesn't go off. No matter what we do at the gate, how will it turn off? We will simply cut off the power. I will cut off the washer. I will reconnect it and you see the light doesn't stay on. Now the light has gone off. To turn the light back on, we have to give it again. One command. With our hiring, here nicely we gave it lit up. We left the little lamp on so we can check the beasteries. The same will happen, no matter how many times we do it. If there is one peculiarity I would like to mention, is that the gate, it does not control the current that will pass. Through the thyristor, it's not like transistors, it's like digital circuits. It has logic 0 and 1. Depending on the characteristics of the thyristor and the voltage that will go to the gate, but it does not control the current that will pass through the rise and fall, like in transistors and MOSFETs. That's why we say it's actually a relay, which can hold its state until the current is interrupted. And it also has the advantage of not having metallic parts, the moving parts, so it doesn't wear out often. It just needs a heat sink on top to work with high currents. Well, that was the video. If you liked it, give us a like. I'm waiting for comments. And in order not to miss the next videos, subscribe to our channel. Also click on notifications to see the new videos we have. And of course, you can write to me in the comments. Questions inquiries, and what else you want to see from my channel. Well, joy to everyone.